we look at this x, which is t star of s n three dimensional subspace. Is this is this on? You can hear me okay? Is it? Okay. Is it maybe higher? Space of two pointed rational curves and x with some degree z. We'll look at its virtual fundamental cycle and we push it forward on the evaluation of these two marked points. And so then we get um, this. First of all, <coughs> there's a, as we discussed, there's a, there's a a factor of h bar, and then some cycle, which I think I denoted cd, where cd, we'll look at, now we'll look at the moduli space of, so this is my x, and I look at a two-pointed rational curve, I look at the curves of degree d, and this, this evaluated these two marked points, I go to x squared. And so that, that would be, of course, sitting. This would be, a, this will be sitting in, in the product of x with itself over its affinization. But in fact, its dimension is exactly the dimension of this. So it's in, it's in top, it's in the top homology group of this. And this is the union, so this is this is might be called Steinberg variety. I think the Steinberg I, I use Steinberg variety as a generic term for varieties like this, although I think the Steinberg variety original is probably just for the T star of flag variety. And so and this has maybe called like German S, and this has a bunch of bunch of reducible components. For example, there is uh, maybe I write it C, uh, C0. This is the diagonal. So this, this variety always has a component which is a diagonal. Diagonal is clearly dimension x, dimensional sub variety here. Then there is uh, the next one, which is will be, which will be the one of interest to us. And then and then there's the last one, which is maybe I'll write this k. Okay. This is uh, this is just Grassmannian cross Grassmannian. So inside inside of uh, uh, so Grassmannian is a is a is a cycle inside its uh, cotangent bundle. It's uh, it's it's compact, therefore it's going to go to point under affinization. In particular, it's a Grassmannian cross Grassmannian is going to be a, a it's going to be a dimension x dimensional cycle in here, so it's always. So we will we want to look at this one. So we will find out what it is because, in fact, the cycle C D for D not, for D equals zero. You get, of course, the diagonal because d equals zero. C, well, not C D, but the, in the in the in the d equals zero case, you're going to get the diagonal. That is clear because if a, a degree zero point degree two points lie on degree zero curve, even all of the same. And so this is so this is the one. This is the one we're always going to get. So we will see that this is C D is in fact proportional. One. And so therefore, in particular for d equals 1, this is in fact the locus, this is the locus, these are two points 
What does d equal 1? d equal 1 means a line. A line. So two points of life. So maybe I'll, we'll get to this more precise analysis in a second. Maybe I'll say a few words in general. So in general, this sort of analysis, this sort of analysis is applicable to, uh, to so what, what, is, what is true in general. So, if, so for any, for any x, which is an equivariant, is an equivariant, The resolution. So what's a, what's an equivariant symplectic resolution? It's uh, it's first of all it's a symplectic algebraic variety on uh, which is a resolution of singularities. If it's what does so when do we know that some variety is a resolution of singularity? It means it means when you have the when you look at the canonical map from X to the spectrum of global functions of X. So it's an affine, uh, it's an affine algebraic variety. So, so it's not affine, but it's sorry, it's a resolution of guys of an affine algebraic variety. So spectrum of global functions on x, x So this is this is resolution of singularities means this is uh, this is proper birational. And conversely, if you have x, then it can only be resolution singularities of this of this variety. So if you already give an x, then you know what resolution singularity of what it is. And so x is a uh, is a simplex resolution if it's symplectic, if it's a uh, proper means properly and birational to the spectrum of global functions. And the covariant means you have a group action. In this case, so here, here I had an action of this. Uh, this equivariant variable h bar that came from an action of if we denote C star h bar, the one that scales the cotangent directions. And this, this group action scales the symplectic form. Equivariant means it scales symplectic form non-trivially. And then in this situation, it's always true that you'll have uh, the, the, this, this virtual class will be divisible by h bar. Because the, the kind of argument we gave with this abstraction theory is always only use symplectic form, so you get this h bar factor and then then some cycle. That cycle will be always sitting here, and the dimension of this for any symplectic resolution is the dimension of x. So this analysis is the same. This this again this this Steinberg variety will split into a bunch of components, and it's always Bittrich case, which we'll, we'll analyze in a second. It's always be the case that that only very few of them contribute. Like here, the you could forget k of them, but in fact, only very few of them contribute. And so, uh, and which which contribute is is uh, which components can contribute? This is uh, this is uh, this is determined. Many components are maybe principle, general principle. Somehow many components on the standard variety are ruled out by something. So the uh, you see here, the cycle has to be h bar times some non-equivalent cycle. If you see, if you compute, if you see that the contribution in in some component is in fact divisible by h bar square, means in fact it's zero. So anytime you see you compute a contribution and see it's divisible by h bar square, then it just there's just in fact it's zero identical. And so let's maybe maybe uh, 
a more uh, a more basic example along these lines is that, for example, x, I can take the Hilbert scheme of say n points in the plane. So I presume in Kyoto everybody knows what this thing is. I don't have to explain. And uh, if you, uh, yeah, if for some reason you don't, you should be really ashamed of yourself. But, uh, and so then this map pi, this is this is resolution of singularities of the n-fold symmetric product. And what are the what are the what are the components of the Steinberg variety look like? So if I want to start, so this is means this means so if I have here I have a a better picture. So here I have a, a sub scheme, and I'll draw a sub scheme of the kind that if I have a, like a, like three points come together, and then so maybe I'll draw a curvilinear sub scheme just to. Be can have like three points together on the parabola, and then maybe uh, two, two points together on some line. Of course, not every subscheme is curvilinear, but, and then a point. And then this is going to map to just, to just three times this point, two times this point, and one times this point. So this, this map takes takes the scheme and just takes it uh, and remembers only its only its, only its the um, the corresponding zero size zero dimensional size. And so then the components of the Steinberg variety are indexed by partitions of n. So my Steinberg variety will be a, a union of n. And what is this thing going to look like? So this means. Uh, so, and in particular, right, the fiber here, the fiber, so, so if I have, uh, what's the dimension of the fiber? If I have two points come together, then they could come together along some direction. It means the dimension of the fiber is, 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 you lose one dimension here. And in general, if you have like, three points, it means you lose two dimensions and so on. So then the, 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 this, this are the, these are pairs. You just fix this partition. So it means you have a, some, some pair of size mu1, some partition. So this is, this is mu is a partition of n, some mu2, and so forth. So of course you have pairs of subscheme that map to the same cycle of some, some length. So what is the dimension here? You get you get uh, for uh, for for every for every part of mu you get uh, mu one for the for the how many what dimension of the fiber in the first factor plus you get mu one minus one for the dimension of the of the fiber in the second factor plus you get two for the for where that point is for this where this point is located right so. So each mu contributes two mu i, and so you sum them up, you get exactly the dimension of x. The dimension of x is is um, and now I claim that uh, that that only only sigma that corresponds to a partition of a single part of length n contributes. The quantum product to this to this uh, to C D to any C D. And what's the argument? The argument was suppose I have a curve, and there's so it has to be a curve in the fiber of this map. But then if I have a curve in the fiber of this map, then it means so, so I have a 
So I, I'm trying. So there's a there's a there's x and there's another copy of x. So maybe I'll draw. So it means means this this scheme somehow changes. So maybe it, this this rotates and this becomes some different curve. We have a curve in the fiber of this. Any any curve will be contracted by this map, so if we have a curve that sits in the fiber. But then, see, a curve in the fiber in this map is really a product of what happens here and what happens here. I mean, it's, a cur it's, a, it's a curve in the product. Because there's no way, this subscheme has no way of interacting with this subscheme. The Hilbert scheme is really a product of two different, of two, of two smaller Hilbert schemes here. There are two, I mean, if you have more than, if you have more than one part, then you have two, two, and two independent ways for them to interact. And that means each one of them, so if I have a curve in the product of symplectic variety, and it's non-trivial in each factor, then each factor will contribute to each bar. And so that thing is just nice. And then there is a separate computation, there is a separate computation to do this computation. But we're not going to do it today. I'll explain some principle by which can be, I mean, the principle by which I'll explain how Dan's grass meaning can also be applied for the Hilbert scheme of points. And so for Grassmanian, the different principle will be used. And so for Grassmanian, we will see, we'll see which curves contribute. We will see for we will use equivariant localization. To, to, to compute this push forward, one could in principle Look at a current local. I mean, one could principle compute this push forward by current localization. Current localization, which I uh, spent some time discussing yesterday, it's a very powerful tool. In principle, one can do this computation. Much better, however, to combine it with this analysis because if you if you really compute it by localization, <laughs> then, then at the end you'll have some magic identity you know, with many many terms, and in the end they're zero. So it's always best to to think a little bit ahead of time. So only compute the terms you really need to compute. And so it means general true in the current localization. You don't have to use, you don't use, a current localization is a very powerful tool, but don't use it blindly because otherwise you get, you know, you get much more, you know, somehow you use, you do much more complicated exp computation that you need to do. So, so a current localization on, or maybe for, for the action, for the action of A on the um, on the right. I mean, I mean, nobody pointed out that this is some strictly speaking. I but I said something incorrect here, and uh, and the the, the the correct things. So think about it. This is what I've proven. Is this this curse? Really non-trivial, as long as you have one, more than one marked point. More than one point came together. Okay. That, that's, if, there's, if for some of this point is one, that is OK. So you, can have a, you can have some parts equal to one. So, uh, so uh, uh, so accusation for the action of uh, on this on, t on on my x. Or maybe I'll restore to t star dress median. This is my x. For uh, a, this is the diagonal towards a one gm up towards the gln. So we are computing a push forward of some cycle. And that uh, that push forward, like we discussed before, you can always compute by localization. It means you 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 just push forward from the fixed locus 
but what you can push and quarrel for the fixed law because there's some there's some uh, contribution of of the normal direction to the fixed law. Okay. Get there. And so what are the fixed laws? So M zero two. Um, X, D, what are they? Well, how can a curve, so maybe, maybe the first thing is to, is to think about what are the fixed laws in X itself. Well, so in X itself, I, I claim first of all that this is just uh, this is the fixed law in the Grassmannian itself. And then, uh, and then this corresponds to coordinate subspaces. We discussed fixed loss in gross many itself. It correspond to uh, maybe span, i.e. span some subset of coordinate vectors, where i Ranges of K in the subset of one for M. And the reason, if I have a fixed point isolated in the variety, that means my torus acts with non-trivial weights in the tangent space to that point. It acts in with non-trivial weights in the tangent space of the fixed point. It acts with non-trivial weights in the cotangent space. And therefore, in the fiber of the of the cotangent bundle, there can be at least one, only one point, the zero point. So whatever fixed point here has to project here, but then in the fiber of this map, there's only one fixed point. And so if I have, um, if I have now, uh, um, I have a, a map from a two-pointed curve to uh, to some variety. So what can happen? So here I have a maybe maybe my two-point rational curve, and I draw some some example of such. So maybe this is one mark point, and there's uh, another mark point. So where can it go? So this is not. Maybe I'll just draw x in a curvilinear way. And so x, by my assumption has uh, some isolated set of fixed points. Maybe these are the fixed points. Something about it. And then the, a marked point can only go to a fixed point. There's no, it's a point. So if it's fixed by, if it's, if the map is fixed by, by a torus, it means this guy goes to a fixed point. Maybe, maybe I'll do this. And then uh, the and then some 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 components. This one also goes to a fixed point. Some components, some components of this curve can also just just collapse to a fixed point. So maybe and this is okay. This is okay for this component to collapse because it has three it has three uh, it has three marked points. But the some components and. Some components may don't necessarily have to collapse because you see the torus the torus that acts here we we consider maps up through interpretation domain. So so a torus acting on X, its action on the image may be compensated by the action on the source. So it can be the case that that some component goes to a one dimensional torus orbit. So it could be that this this. There's a, if there's a, if there's a one-dimensional torus orbit, then some rational component we can send there. And then this, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll use different colors so that it will be clearer. So like this one, because maybe I'm about to take this point to be blue. So this blue has to be, since this is a special point, has to be fixed. And then another component, maybe go to a different orbit here, to a different one-dimensional torus orbit. Then this whole thing, maybe keep it red. This can be collapsed. 
So this jit goes to this. And then this white piece uh, just go in the summer of life. Okay. So now the components of this map that are not collapsed by the map, the components of the domain that are not collapsed by the map, they have to do, go to the one dimensional torus orbit. And components that are you know, somehow components that, that are collapsed, well, they have to be collapsed to uh, two fixed points, and then the nodes and the marked point have to go fixed points. So you have like a like a I mean, so in, in the target you have a configuration of fixed points and one dimensional orbits, and you can draw like a tree in that configuration. That's clear. So what are these one-dimensional so fixed points we discussed? So one-dimensional torus orbits. But if we look, I, I claim they're also isolated. Something, in fact, very simple. So, uh, so if we look at the tangent space at a, at a fixed point, maybe call it, maybe call this point P sub i. So we look at this point P sub i to the cotangent bundle to my variety x. What is the character? What is the character of that space? Well, this is this is the home from the bundle to the quotient plus do. And this has this has weights. Maybe I'll write it like this. So this is if my uh, AI, so this has uh, this has weight um, like this is the character of that is summation a j minus a i over j not in i i in i plus this h bar sorry uh, the character would be should write the character multiplicatively. A j over a i plus the same thing for the dual, so h bar inverse summation a i over a j. In other words, this this tor this th the only conclusion from this is that these torus here, these are distinct, so these, these are And so at, at the marked point, one dimensional orbit can only be can only go in the direction of this coordinate subspace. I mean the only direction of one of them. These are these are they so if I have a, a vector space and I have a torus acting with distinct weights, then the one dimensional orbits are just the eigen just the eigen directions. And so and so these are these are so this this orbits are only 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 of the form. So if, if this is my point P i, then what I can do is if I choose one of this, if I choose one of these weights, let, let's call A j over A i, well I'm gonna get to the point P sub so to speak i prime, where i prime is where I take i, I add J and I remove I. So in other words, the the uh, two fixed points are are uh, are called are lie on a one-dimensional orbit if and only if they differ by exactly two elements. And two k element subsets they cannot differ by one element. But, uh, but but it can differ by two, and this is and this is this is what these are the one-dimensional orbit. This is also I and mean, this is one of the homework problems. That this is also a line in the Plucker embedding. And so a line in the Plucker embedding is when you have two two linear subspaces lie in the line in the Plucker embedding if their intersection is k minus one dimension.
So now, now we would like to now the weight. If you have a fixed point, then uh, then uh, you compute push forward. You have to divide by the so. Remember, so in case you fall apart, in case you, if you want to compute like the uh, like the Euler characteristic of some sheet that was over summing, so say. Say with some vertex or some variety, or some variety, which is in this case modulus. Modulus. So with some over fixed points, so let's say assume fixed points are isolated. So P, maybe we call it the left, fixed points F in R. Um, in M A, you compute the Euler characteristic. Well, it's a, it's one point thing, so this is you don't have to take Euler characteristic. It's just the restriction of f to that point f, and here you divide by product of one minus w inverse, where w inverse are the weights. Tangent space at f to my module f. And so, what we're going to compute now is a difference in two ways. So, now, so this is difference, it now differs in two respects that if you, uh, is, uh, is this for, uh, For m being our m above zero to x and d, d. First of all, the tangent space this becomes virtual tangent space. This, which is the which is the difference between the deformation at f and obstructions at f. And so its character, so its character, is now the summation of some Wi's minus some other, uh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. New i. And then since we're computing not in K theory, we're computing in, in cohomology, we just get a product of the in in cohomology you, uh, you know you imagine this w is exponential of your cohomological variable so 1 minus 1 over w becomes this w and then and then will be the i will be the i so the weights of abstraction go in the numerator the weights of deformation go in the denominator And now we want to, in particular, in, in, in this abstraction piece, there will be some, some ways that are h-bar. Like one of them we already identified. And then we would like to understand this abstraction. We would like to, to, to see what is the overall power of h-bar by which this thing is divisible. Because we, we, like anything, anything which is divisible by h-bar square, we just discard. And so, okay. So, what are these, what are these, uh, what are these uh, deformation abstractions? Well, the deformation of abstraction. This is we discussed what this is. These are the. So first, there is a first there is a deformation, and abstraction that come from, from deforming a map from a fixed curve. So there's a. So and then there's a. I write a deformation, 
of the so there's a deformation of the domain. There's no obstruction to deforming a domain, plus deformation of the map minus the obstruction to, to deformation. And this part, this part here, this is the this is the cohomology of the pullback of the tangent point. And and inside this, in the abstraction piece here, we found this. H uh, H one of the cotangent, but you know the tangent to the curve itself. And there was this piece that was had the this was a trivial piece that had this non-trivial non current weight. And there was there was a discussion yesterday. And so now I'm just what I want to point out this is this is qualitative. Is that now for every component here? There will be a power of h bar. There's a power of h bar for every component. So for every every one of these will give me a power of h. every every one. I mean, the collapsed one. There's there's is this different because this, for example, this marked point will kill that. Will kill. Uh, Don't worry, but the, this one, the two-pointed one, this will, this is, um, it's for every component that contributes. So this contributes h bar, but it really, it really contributes h bar to the number of components. And then you can ask, well, maybe this means that the curve can never break. But that is not true because you see this in here, you can get a power of h bar on denominator. And so, because this is, um, this is what, is, what is the deformation of the curve? The deformation of the source, if you have a nodal curve, the deformation of that are just the smoothing of a node. And so, what is the so what is the what is if I look at the locus of if I look at the locus so maybe, maybe abstracted if I take so inside some. Let's be let be not super specific. You look at some, in fact, you can like a like a stack of curves. You don't have to be. I mean, this is this is a very general statement I want to make, and this is not. So, so inside of that, you can look at divide. There's a divisor of reducible curves. So you have curves of the, you know, somehow there's some some curve general element here. General moduli element here, some curve. I'm drawing, I'm drawing like a higher genus picture. There. Inside that moduli, there's a divisor of of curves that break. So here, a point in here is a union. So you have a, you know, you have one component and a union another component. Not one. And then, so this is the divisor. So the normal bundle to this divisor, what is this? What's the normal bundle to that divisor? So if we have means on each component you have, you have a marked point. Because this is where they join. And then, and then you have. So so, maybe, so this may be so this may be. So let's 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 not get confused with this 
complex part of this. And then there's some smoothing of this. And so, so this is, oh, right, so there's a, there was a, some curve C, and it broke into C1 and C2. And then there's, uh, then the normal bundle to this divisor is in fact the tensor product of the tangent, uh, of, this, of the tangent line at the point P to the curve C, tensor, the tangent, and then we'll see. This is this is a, this is the line, and that line is normal to the divide. And why is this? Because the smoothing of the node is just the local model of that. If you take uh, yeah, x y equals zero and replace it by x y equals epsilon, and the weight of epsilon is the product of the weight of x and the product of y. And so, from this from the smoothing of the node, there is there is, therefore, a term that is the weight. So this has the weight, weight of. So this, this, this guy produces the weight, one tangent weight. Plus another. And in fact, it gets more complicated because this. So more complicated, this, the complete truth of that is that this map from here, so what was that? From here to there could, could have been a multiple cover. It could be that this map from here to there is some you know, G1 to 1 cover. This, this could be a variable, some variable Z here could be going to Z to the G1 here. And then if they're similarly, you take Z2 to 1 covering there, then the real tangent weight, so if you have a, if you have a tangent weight, which was my, so maybe, maybe so there's, some, there's some weight W1, another weight W2, so this V1 is, is really A, J over AI, so let's not worry about this. And so the weight is not really V1 plus V2, because the weight to the curve is V1 divided by this Z1. So it really is G1 divided by G1 plus V2 divided by G2. So if this, this guy may very well, in general, this guy may give you uh, H bar. There's no, there's no reason for this one. And so then there's a definition of, so, so, so if you count, but this could be only, you can get only, I mean, so you could get at most, at most one H bar per node. And so then, then, uh, And you count the powers, and but the point is that you don't get so. Like if you if you try to smoothen this node here, you're never going to get h bar because this is the weight. You only get sum of. So sorry, John. How does this count? So maybe I'll get to the so 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 so, so maybe definition. Um, a, 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 a map a stable map M in M uh, G to bar X D A is unbroken if 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 one of the if one of this is true is either either it maps to uh, to the fixed locus 
or it is an unbroken chain. of the form, so you have a thumb pick point. Six point. First mark point, this is my first mark point, so this is f of p1. I'm going to just write first mark point. And then the second mark point. And the, and the tangent way that every junction, so there's some degrees, d1. And the tangent rate w1 w2, then d1 over d1 plus d2 over d2 is equal to 0 mod h. It means it's just equal to 0 since, since a, h is not the weight of a, you can just say say equal to 0 as the weight of a. I'll just keep on the edge. Or, or you have the same thing except you have a collapsed component. Then you have your marked points sit here, and then you have an unbroken chain. And so then this, this, this power counter for H bar says that the, everything which is not an unbroken map contributes a power at least H bar square. And why is this? Maybe we can, I mean, it's easy to see, but it's, let's, just, let's just analyze it here. Well, suppose you had, suppose you had more than, suppose you had a, or let, let's, let's, for the sake of the argument, assume that you, maybe you have a tail. Here's your marked point. And so this is maybe, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll for. Let, let's cons let's uh, try to distinguish marked points and and fixed points. So we have a. So marked point sitting at top of fixed point. This. So let's suppose, suppose there is, so this is marked point. Point. And then this is just a fixed point. Fixed point, fixed point, fixed point. And suppose you, you, you got to the second marked point, and then you, uh, but you still continue. You don't terminate there, you like an up little chain. So what will happen? Here you have, your marked point cannot be a node. And so what really happens in your curve is that you have uh, some, uh, up in, in the domain of the curve, you have, uh, you have a, a, one more component that gets collapsed by this map. So it looks like this. And your mark point is really here. It really, the, the stable map really looks like this. Its image looks like this, but the domain of the stable map looks like this. And then as you try to deform this, I suppose you try to deform it, smoothen this now, then the ways will be, there will be some, no, some Non-trivial weight from the source and, a tri and, and, and nothing from this side. Because this side is, you know, the weight of that is just zero. Right? So you're not going to get, you, you, 
you, there's no chance to get this kind of consolation. Anytime you get like a triple point or you have a mark point and then you continue, you, you, you lose your ability to get this consolation. Right, this was a very long discussion, but the truth of the, the, truth of the matter is that they're the only, so, so far, God, thanks, observation, really. This equation can never be satisfied for grass many. Because these weights are just not, I mean, just involve different variables. There's no way to make them proportional, no matter how you multiply them. Okay. This, this tangent weights are, so this concretely, you're looking for, for relations of the form Aj minus Ai over D1 plus Ak minus Ai al over d2, where i, you know, i and is where where i and l belong to i, and j and k do not belong to i, and okay, there's, there's no solution to this. Right? They're just not not proportional at all. So this is no solution. So you cannot have a chain. So the only so the only so the conclusion that the only the only unbroken curves are multiple covers. Well, the ones that collapsed, they collapsed, they collapsed. The only non-trivial moving curves are multiple covers. Once. Anything else? You don't have to compute. Because anything else is going to give you, is going to give you something which is divisible by h bar square. So what does this mean? It means that if you want to compute what uh, the cycle S D in any degree D. This is really just computation for lines, with a, with a little bit with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of uh, yeah yeah. Somehow when you compute mul so what does it mean we compute multiple covers? Well, we compute multiple covers. It means okay, you you you. So there's some there's some yoga how you compute the multiple covers. So if you have your multiple cover, that means your uh, so, you know, this pullback of this tangent bundle will be something. You have to you have to think what it is. It will be some some nominator denominator, and then you can. But then you can. Um, uh, you'll see that the numerator denominator, they've. Uh, there's some computation I advise you to do. In fact, I'd, well, I don't want to do it here. It's not. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the homework. It's some. The the essential part in this computation is we have a multiple cover, then it has an automorphism because the map that sends, if I have a map that sends z to this power, then multiple that z can be multiplied by any d rules of unity, and this will be automorphism of this map. So a multiple cover has an automorphism of order d. So if you have a multiple cover degree d, that has an automorphism of order d. And since we're computing the way the way the virtual cycle is defined, it's defined with rational coefficients because because of the automorphism, is that this the automorphism factor comes comes out. You get one over d. And so then the conclusion is that this 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 c, c d is really is one over d times c one. This is, this is something you can. You do this little sign as an exercise. And the way to do it is you compute, you, you compute the contribution of one single curve. In any 
anyone you choose. One single map. Anyone you choose. And you have to you see what the, what the weights say. And then uh, and the, 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 only, the, the, only, the only interesting thing will be this. I mean, there are other ways to do it, but it's maybe best to do it by localization. As, 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 a, as an exercise. And so this means that this means this in fact means complete computation because the boy what is C1? C1 is something explicit corresponding. It's the, the pairs of points that lie on a line. What does it mean? So how concretely? So remember, so maybe I'll raise this picture here. So, so X, remind you the X was the quotient of pairs of matrices A, so I have a map CK CN, and this is maybe we call this one A and this one C, so I said uh, B times A equals zero, and A injective, where A is zero, more than GLK. And this by the map where you take D was the product in the other direction, A times B was mapping to this the set of matrices D such that D in and by a matrices, so I said D square is zero, and um, what else? The rank of D is less or equal than the minimum of K and by X. The, the, uh, the, uh, so my variety, uh, my, the, uh, the components of the Steinberg variety are parameterized by the strata here. So then this is, this is, uh, has some stratification. Maybe you take the rank of D, could be. Well, let's say, and somehow for concreteness, let's say for concreteness, I would say that, uh, in fact, K is equal to equal to minus K. <coughs> So then the maximum the rank can be is k, k be k minus one, and so forth zero. Then the since the the image of D has to be under uh, the contained in the image of A contains in the kernel of of D. If if this thing is k dimensional, then uh, then there's only one choice for A, and therefore the only one choice for B. So over this sits, sits the diagonal, uh, which we denote as sigma zero. Over this, so this over this sits grass may. If if uh, if D is zero, this, this A B can be anything. So this is the whole Grassmannian sits, Grassmannian plus Grassmannian. And over this sits. So sits 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 what? Sits a pair of <coughs> sits a pair of um, um, so you um, so this is this is where this guy is um, is 
k-dimensional. So you look at the. So this guy is k minus one dimensional. So dimension is something down like dimension equals k minus one. And so my whole uh, S1, this is the set of pairs where uh, my, my two subspaces, they sit in here. So in particular, if I have a, if I have two, uh, like if I look at just projection to Grassmannian, what does what does it mean? What do, what are the corresponding points in Grassmannian? The corresponding points in Grassmannian are two subspaces, such that intersections of the MSK minus one dimensional. In other words, these are really these are the dark points in the Plucker line. So this is. And then, basic but important observation here is this. This correspondence this is very often the case with, uh, with time correspondences. It's really a product of something of, on one correspondence transpose. So maybe so. So what does it say? It says I I have two two points in X, and I constrain them by 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 some intermediate by some intermediate object. Okay. Means I look at the first correspondence formed, so maybe so this is I write I write it like this. So sigma one is really a product of some other correspondence which I'll denote and it has to do with SL2. I'll denote it by F. F and a transpose correspondence, which is also by E. So what does correspondence F is? So correspondence F, this is a correspondence in, in so it's a product in my T star cross mania K N and T star of the cross mania K minus 1. And what does it form by? It's formed by pairs. So this is my image. So I have a, a pair. I have a pair here. Uh, uh, here I have a pair uh, A1, B1. Here I have a pair A2, B2. And the correspondence is this consists of pairs such that the image of A2 is contained in the image of, of A1. This is, my, this is my image of D. 
and secondly, the, the operator z, which is the um, which is a1 times b1, it's also equals a2 times b2. In other words, this is like a Steinberg correspondence, but for but for Grassmannians of different size. Since Grassmannians of different size, they can map to the same. So this is, they have, uh, this is my, this is maybe my x. And I'll write it xk. And this is xk minus 1. But they both, xk and xk minus 1, they both map to square zero matrices. And we can, so it makes sense to take a product over this map. And so this is, this is like this. So this is, this is just the first, so, the, so, so I mean, this is just, I'm just rewriting the, the top half of this correspondence. Because if I have an actual operator, if I, you know, since my A2 is injective, then the actual operator, the, the, you know, to know what D is, is the same to know what B1 and B2 is. And then, and then to find out this whole correspondence, you just take this correspondence and, and compose it with the transpose correspondence. This, this is what it means. I mean, what is the composition of correspondences? Is the set of is the set of all points such that there is a middle point in this thing. Okay. And so then this is the conclusion is done. And we can write Okay, this is very so. So in the context of Nakajima varieties, this is somehow more or less automatic. That all this all these correspondences will be bilinear and simpler correspondences. Maybe be quadratic and more simpler correspondences. And so how do we write then? So this is like a basic this is the beginning of geometric representation theory, that these two correspondences, E and F, generate Geometric action. Action of FL2 on the homology or homology of direct sum over K from Q to N. It's the beginning of this whole theory of geometric realization of And so how are we using this language? How are we going to write the, 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 the quantum product then? So first of all, this is, so if we want to write the quantum product so, um, Remind me what is uh, so the, the, how the quantum product is defined. So the quantum product is an operator in the say cohomology of X. So it starts with the cup product, and then and then there's a term for all non-zero degrees. Take one zero. Is that the D? And then comes defined an operator. So then we take action of m zero three bar on x d virtual one. Sorry, this is a mixture of formulas and English words. Since I didn't, I don't think I defined the 
I don't think I defined the notion of all this, this correspondence on, so you take the first, you, you, you take th three entries here somehow, you know, you use something, then you, you plug your, your, your class, and then you, you take some class, and you take the divisor, then you take the, the, the lambda class, and then the, here you take the output. And so this is now, so if lambda is in H back to the divisor, then, then this operator by the, uh, by this, uh, by this, uh, what's called divisor axiom, but it's really not an axiom, it's a, it's a, it's a simple theorem about curve counting, that this is a divisor you can take out of this, so this would be, so this, what you will get is that, uh, let's get, you take, you pair lambda with a d, take z to the d, and you take the action, this action divided by c d. You forget that one of the mark points, if, if you put a divisor, one of the mark points, you can forget it at the expense of it. And so this c d, is 1 over d times, times c1. What? H bar. Oh, right, right, h bar, right, exactly. Yeah. H, oh, no, c1 is, I think, it's, oh, right, h bar, h bar, h bar. So I get h bar, h bar. Thank you, Tom. And so then, then this d and this d will cancel. I mean, this is something linear in d and you divide by d here. And so then, then, then what you get, so then the whole thing becomes, so you get still the cup product plus h bar. And now the sum I can take. So I get the pairing, so I get by pairing of lambda with, uh, with the generator, with, with so to speak, in a curve of degree one. This is the generator. And then I get, well, I get a geometric series, so I'm going to get z over 1 minus z times um, ef. So I, uh, I must... Uh, um, I must apologize. Uh, I forgot to say when we were discussing. Of course, there is. A, we, we computed this. Uh, the case when I was stating the uh, when I was stating the uh, um, the classification of unbroken maps. There was also the case where the two marked points are mapped to the same point. And so in principle, there could be a contribution from the I mean, that, of course, evaluates to the diagonals. I mean, if, you two, if both marked points map to the same point in X, then this goes to the diagonal. So in principle, there could be a diagonal corresponding. So in principle, so a very general formula like this is true for any academic variety. So in principle, there could be a diagonal or, or scalar corresponding. But in this case, it can be shown to be zero because the, uh, oh no, I mean, it depends, depends on your convention. Usually it's zero. And very often, no, not usually. So the, the way that this is found from the fact that, that this operator, this scalar, is, needs to, this, this operator, 
scalar depends depends on z. In fact, it's all of the form of the form in fact of the form all capital Z. And the, this is found from the fact that this has to kill to kill one in B H zero. In other words, this is this is a consequence of the fact that if I take the quantum product of it, of anything with one, then this is just the the I mean, this is a uh, the general property of quantum multiplication that identity remains identity for quantum multiplication. We take the quantum product with identity, we still get the same, the same thing. And so, and so in principle, I mean, the general formula is true, but in principle, there is a scalar here. The scalar is found from the fact that if f happens not, if if this lowering operator happens not to kill the fundamental class, then we have to compensate it. So. Uh, so that's a formula. And now this is <laughs> now I have to remind yourself what is this what is this we're trying to, to do? Now we'd like to compare this with the formula. So now we'll compare, I want to compare. And so spin chain, so, uh, so what was the spin chain? Spin chain was some specific with some specific uh, specific operator that was acting in this specific energy operator on the vaccination of I plus one and then communication I plus one with quasi periodic boundary condition. And how will the comparison go? So first of all, the uh, the uh, so what would be the what would be the, the the key to the comparison will be a certain will be a certain quantum group. So now I take the Yang again. So the Yang of GL two. This is, I'll explain what the quantum group is. It's a quantum group. Maybe, so what the quantum group is, i.e. is a, is a, I'll explain what the thing is, the whole algebra. Information. Um, deformation of of the universal development of this Lie algebra tensor polynomials in one variable. Let's call it like that. And uh, and the relation, so the relation of this to to relation of this to spin chain, this is uh, this is one fundamental object of how one fundamental field in which Kyoto made a fundamental contribution to mathematics and physics. And namely, and the way, the way this is connected is that this guy, this, has, this guy has representations of this kind. And also, it has a family of, uh, of commutative subalgebra, has a family Family of maximum commutative subalgebra. Uh, 
um, maybe called should be called Baxter subalgebra probably. Although it's usually called beta subalgebra. I mean, beta is a great, I mean, one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, but I don't think he considers this algebra. So I think Baxter is the one who's uh, Baxter subalgebra. Because Baxter didn't have Yangian, but anyway, he considers that this is, and they depend on Z parameterized. By Z, where Z is a generally speaking, it's an element in in the Cartan torus modular center. So, which for GL two will be precisely will be precisely a matrix like this here in GL two. So. So this is this is the matrix for quasi the quasi periodic boundary conditions were parameterized by a matrix like this. And so and so this symmetric subalgebra will will go so there's a this this energy operator will belong to the image of this algebra. So this will be this will be saying that this this will be a quantum integrable system and that this particular operator which we wanted to diagonalize is in fact included in some very big, very large commutative algebra, which, cannot, which you know, the whole of them can be diagonalized. In particular, this is how the, uh, I mean, the, some, some analysis, which will, in fact, we'll, I'll try, I mean, one of the goals of my lecture is to get the actual analysis, how you actually diagonalize it. And another fundamental Kyoto discovery is on this side. Is that is that if now if I now look at all the ingredients in this formula, well I have I have this part E and F, this uh, this corresponds this corresponds to SL two. But now if I look, but in this formula I have not only the quantum part, I have also the purely classical part. This this operator. Here. And if I want to compute the commutation relation between E and F and this operator, then what 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 I will discover already well, has been discovered, and, and somehow this is one of the this is uh, this is one of the cornerstones of Nakajima theory, is that is that if I if I'm interested in you know, what sort of algebra does this these two this this SL two generate together with this element. Here, I find that the commutation relation of this guy with this guy, it will be deformation of this, the commutation relation of in, in this polynomial algebra. This guy is like a, it's, it's, it's a deformed version of, of like T minus T. So these are, E and F are the, are the, this ones. So this is an algebra of polynomial matrices, and so then this is uh, in the algebra of polynomial matrices the constant matrices that form the ordinary sub two, and then they're brothers that you can take. So in they this together with some center generate so with some center this together generate exactly this Yang. So this in fact with some central elements this this guys here. They precisely generate this thing again. And then, and then this element here also belongs, it then it, be, it lives at length in exactly this boxer. So these are, these are commuting operators. I mean, certainly it's not just one operator. But in general, quantum multiplication is a commutative algebra. So operators of quantum multiplication form form commutative, a commutative algebra. And that algebra lands into, lands into uh, here. So quantum uh, operators. So in this geometric incarnations, the operators, uh, maybe I'll write it alpha star, which means quantum multiplication by anything. They depend on Z.
maybe I'll just say the key point. I mean, this is, this is uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll say it one more time. This sort of, <coughs> this, this link between quantum integrable systems and uh, geometric representation theory, which is envisioned by, well, Nikrat Sudashvili maybe didn't have it in terms quite like that, but, but, but certainly in very closely related terms, the link is that there are, that there are, uh, that spin chains, integrable spin chains are, are quantum integrable system explained by Youngian symmetry. And this representation, right, I forgot to say that this special representation is the same. So this is, if you think of this, if, uh, what sort of representation of the Youngian does this space, does this space uh, give, is, 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 is that representation of the Youngian? So this is uh, the geometric so statement that the the in if you if you look at the cohomology so, so again the statement if you look at the cohomology of uh, cotangent bound of Grassmannian as a representation of the again this 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 uh, this geometric representation theory construction constructs this as a as a tensor product of two dimensional representations and then if you look in the operator's quantum multiplication. They belong to the to to this box of subalgebra parameterized by the data which is interpreted as a uh, this curve consequence. Maybe I'll uh, so uh in the So maybe um, I don't know. Maybe it's a. Uh, Maybe it's too late in this lecture to start. So there's some. So at this point, you should be somehow. The next step, the next logical step, is to is to is to start building up this framework. And uh, in the uh, we were of course at the for for SL for this particular representation. Well. In, after all, Yangian of JL2 is not such a complicated algebra. You can you can see that this is the right answer. You can see that this belongs this belongs to, to the algebra. It should belong. But uh, maybe uh, a more satisfying way is to have a more more conceptual understanding of why why something like this is true. And this more conceptual understanding, it has to do with uh, you see that this is Yangen is a Hope algebra, and I didn't explain what a Hope algebra is, but I will explain that Hope algebra is different from from uh, from plain associative algebra in that its its representations uh, you can tensor multiply its representation. And in fact, we see that this is somehow tensor space. And actually, the, the kind of the main logical step in 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 some highbrow proof of the fact that this is this 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 is correct answer is is to think geometrically about what this tensor product means. Maybe we'll postpone it and 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 instead just uh, uh, re-examine what the uh, what the very old somehow after all in this particular operator was diagonalized by Hans Bethe like I said almost hundred years ago, and and he found some equations called the Bethe equations. That uh, that describe the spectrum of this operation, 
And these beta equations in particular also describe the spectrum of this operator. So in particular, they describe the spectrum of, of the quantum cohomology ring here. And so maybe I'll, uh, I'll well, postpone the, the general discussion. We first discuss the answer for, for uh, the spectrum. And then this particular will describe the, the spectrum the spectrum of the quantum cohomology ring. So maybe we'll do that. And since it's kind of the easier, lighter stuff. So, um, so I remind a reminder. So if I take the spectrum of um, quantum cohomology of Grassmann in itself. This was uh, this was given by the equations that I have uh, at some variables x i, which raised to the power n were given minus one to the k minus one times z, and was the condition that x i x j are distinct. And so this is like these are uh, for projective space. For projective space, we look at root system. We look at okay, the equidistant points on on the uh, absolute value of x i is z one on n, and then they have to be this for projective space. And for Grassmannian, we have to choose a k element subset of distinct one. Now, if I look at the, the spectrum of a current, a current homology, the Grassmannian, Then, um, then okay. This is, this is, uh, this is, this was described. So this was the set of. The, you also had so this k variables, which was like i. I ranges. And now it has to be the case that x i's. Um, so now the condition is that x i's again they're distinct. And form a k element subset, a k element subset of the set of k1 And right, so this is all everywhere we quotient out by symmetry group. This is up to permutation, and because they, the, this was the, this was the, this was arrangement of hyperplanes, each hyperplane corresponded to, to a particular subset here. It means x i up to permutation have to pick, equal that subset. And now, there's the equations. There are equations for the spectrum of the quantum cohomology of um, the subcastany of covariant subcastanian and the way, the way to write them, maybe I'll write first, I'll write the answer, but then I'll try to explain how to abstractly write them for any, for anything, for any, like a gem variety, at least. 
So then this will be saying like this. So it's you take the product. So first, there will be equations in uh, in uh, uh, they will involve AIs Z and also the variable H bar. And the way it goes is like the product of J from 1 to N. Okay, so. Maybe yeah, the, way, the way to write this equation is really you take the product of for any I, for any I, the product over J from 1 to N x minus a j this is zero and then maybe x size let's say x size to be if x size are the churn roots of the churn roots of the dual tautological bundle then that should be minus here so then you take plus That's very I pose this condition, and I pose this condition, and, uh, and I'm getting what I want. And so now this becomes like this. So if I take the product over j from 1 to n, take this like a before x size and x i, well, maybe I'll divide x i minus j, j minus h bar, then the product. bar this is equal to 1 minus k minus 1 to the z. And so there, there are two observations about it. One is that this is flop invariant. Flop means a change of stability condition for Tistagras Manian. For star Grassmannian, if you change the stability condition, the numerator and denominator that exactly exchanged. And also the curve class, the curve class under flop naturally goes to one minus curve class. So you get one over z. So if I take one over both left hand side and right hand side, I get the I get the beta equation for the flop. And then second, second go into, into equations for so the common generalization of this equation, this equation, is when I replace the z. So in general, the equation is the quantum equation is like this. And then, uh, and they go to this in the limit, go into equations for Grassmannian. This equation, if h bar goes to um, to infinity, and I get take z mu. I declare to be the z old divided by minus h bar power. And why is this correct thing to take? Is that because the computations how do I recover quantum cohomology of Grassmannian itself from the quantum cohomology of the cotentin bundle? If I, I can localize with respect to each bar, so if I take if I look at M0 to X bar with respect to C bar. So H bar, what it does, it just scales all cotangent fiber by, by H bar. So the only way a map can be fixed under this is if it really sits inside. If it really sits inside grass main.
mean, it doesn't have to be two mark points, any number of mark points. But this abstraction theories, of course, are not the same. Abstraction theory. So if I have to sit here, here for my, yeah, have my Grassmannian. And I have a curve in it. Then I have to think about the cotangent bundle. Oh my god, this part. The tangent direction. So there's this, they all get the weight, they all get the weight minus h. And so this, uh, so this, if I look in at the virtual cycle for x, I apologize. I don't want to copy the whole thing. I just copy put x. This is for x. Now let the mini go. Yeah, this is too, this is too sloppy. Maybe I'll take this guy and I'll put the virtual cycle here. And this is the virtual cycle there times the Euler class. So Euler class is, uh, Euler class of a vector bundle is, uh, well, it's, it's top exterior power. And so then, uh, yeah, and here I have to put, since I take the, is it, is it hard? The, the deformations go in denominator and the abstractions go in the numerator, I have to put the minus sign here. So minus cohomology of, uh, the pullback of the cotangent bundle. And this whole thing gets a weight, this whole thing gets a weight h r inverse. This means this whole thing, what does this mean? It means I have a, for every abstraction, I have like minus like a product over h1, some weight in H1, I get an expression like this, and a product over weights in H0, I get an expression like that. I get an expression like this. So this, this, if this is, if the weights, if this has some weights W, then this means, if, the, if, if this bundle has churn roots W, then this Euler class will have this expression. And its behavior for large h bar, it's going to be asymptotic for minus h bar to the rank, so maybe the minus the rank, minus the rank of the cohomology of um, pullback of the potential bundle. And so, what this what this thing will be? This thing will be uh, so this 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 number rank by Riemann Roch is equal to the dimension of to its rank, so the dimension of the Grassmannian plus d times its uh, times its uh, uh, degree, which is which is your pair d. So the, the first term class of this bundle is minus the first term class. To the minus the first term class of the graph many, which is which is the number is n, okay. and so this says that this in degree d I'm going to get an overall factor of h bar, which is which goes like which is like d times n, which means I have to my variable z I have to rescale like this. So if I rescale my variable z like this and I send h bar to infinity, then, then, uh, then, I'm re then I should recover. Then, you know, the quantum product for Grassmannian is gotten from the quantum product for T star in the limit when the current rate becomes, goes to infinity, such that you have to rescale this, you have to rescale this. 
the, the, the curve counting variable. And this is correct. And the way to write this equation, so this is for general, this is, so how do you write this now? How do you write this effect? All oh, right, and then uh, how do you write this, this equation for general x? It's a very beautiful formula for this. So maybe I'll write this formula, it'll be the end of the lecture. And this is what Nikolaev Shatashvili can really compute. I'll explain, and I'll explain how this computation is done. In, uh, I mean, they've computed it before. I mean, I mean they can be on the physical level rigorous, completely rigorous. Also, on the math level of rigorous, completely rigorous, except there's some details. Like, it's only recently been proven that, in fact, the cohomology of Nakajima variety is generated by, by the, for general Nakajima variety, in fact, that the cohomology is generated by the, by the uh, churn clouds or tautological bundles. So, 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 so if I have a Nakajima variety X, So this is so. If I have a the so this uh, so maybe what I have in mind is a, there's a proof by McGirt and Nevins. They say in general, the general that this is what the, you know, this has been expected, but there's no proof. So uh, they say the cohomology, current cohomology of uh, Grassmannian generated. Uh, churn classes of pathological bundles we call them VI I ranges over the vertices of the Dinkin diagram this means that the um, that the spectrum of uh, Current order and current KT of X, this embeds into uh, so the, you have some variables. You have the variables for the Lie algebra of, of the source T, and you have some variables for so this VI has this has churn classes, churn roots. Maybe call them X, I, J, where J ranges from 1 to the rank of the I. This rank of the I is usually you know, the little the I. So, uh, times this, uh, you have these variables, like what, what do you have, like X, 1, 1, to X. One v one. This is module the symmetric uh, and so your your uh, this this thing is embedded in some in in uh, maybe this uh, this, is, this is like for grass many how do you have many several such factors? So in particular, and also in similarly, similarly,
So, in the current K theory, in particular, you have a very special element, the tangent bundle. So, this tangent bundle becomes some symmetric polynomial. So, in particular, so what does it mean? It means that you have the specific, specific symmetric polynomial in this axis, xij, whatever ai. Bar. Like, what is it for Grassmannian? For Grassmannian, we start Grassmannian. What is the tangent bundle? So this is T star Grassmannian. Well, we've, uh, we've discussed that this T star Grassmannian, this is, this is the, uh, the space um, performed by pair, CK, I think it's not A, and this is T, CN. And this is this is my so maybe I'll just not just V. So this is the fiber of my tautological bundle. Uh, this modular which is okay. And so the the churn roots of the tautological bundle, they really so they really do this x1 xk in my G. And my uh, maybe maybe I want to take the dual tautological bond, so I put inverse. This xi's are true And then my torus A, well, I guess there are two different A's, but I am not too late to change now. So the torus attacks here. And so what is then, what's the tangent bundle to x? Well, it's written here, right? So then it's, oh, in satisfying the condition, the condition is that uh, b a equals 0. So uh, first there's a. a has the character of just summation. So a i x j. And a a is, a, is, a is an element of C and tensor V do. And so this the character of my, my group is, is this thing. Plus B, B goes the other way, and it's scaled by H bar inverse, since this is nation. The dual thing, the dual thing is this. Then I have to impose, then I take out the, the tangent bundle to the group. So this means I subtract x by x j. This is the this is the character of the this is the this is the character of Lie algebra of G L K. And if I think where is the moment map takes place? Well, the moment map takes place in the exact same space with the exact same character, except the moment map has an extra h bar inverse in it. So, so really, it's 1 plus 1 over h bar. You see, if it would have been much better if I denoted h bar inverse by h bar, because we just keep writing h bar inverse, h bar inverse. Oh, the waste of chalk, but it's a linear. So this is for the this is for the equation. This is for for the equation B A zero. So this 
So this is the expression. Of course, while in general, while in general you can uh, so how? Just from the quiver description, the tangent bundle to any Nakajima variety has this similar expression. You just read it from the quiver data, you just read it off. And so now the formula. The formula is. So there has to be as many equations as you have xi. For every, I mean, it has to be equation, which is uh, has to be zero dimensional over this base, right? all of our, all of our uh, equation K theory, equation cohomology, and so forth. It's all, it's all you know, maps finite to one to the base, to equation base. It has to be for every x i we need an equation, and the equation look like this: that for any i, you take the Euler class of x i for every, maybe i j, i j, x i j, z by z x i j, of the tangent bundle. So that's some expression in k theory. You can take this theorem to be some expression. You take the Euler class, and this is equal to the corresponding. So for every one of the vertices, this is the weakness i, and there is a, and there is a, a so then, uh, yeah. indices i correspond to uh, you have as many degree counting variables as you have vertices in the Dinkin diagram, and so then you put the corresponding variables at i here. Right. Concretely, what is it going to be for Grassmannian? For Grassmannian, if I take so x i d by d x i tangent bundle, well, there is, uh, I should have written J and I. J and I, so this would be, this would be summation over J, A I, A J, times X I. Minus, is this guy, the other guy is going to go in denominator, minus 1 over h bar um, a j x i. Now, um, now I'm going to get minus h bar, sorry, minus 1 plus h bar inverse times the uh, summation or j. Now, now every time, so this, in this in this expression, I go for every x i for every x i and j, I get the pair i x j, and I get also the pair x j x i. Okay. And so this one will give me plus, the other will give me minus. So it's going to be x i over x j minus x j over x i. Now, what would be the other class of this? The other class of this, and so we, we, I didn't give, I didn't in, in introduce a separate variables in cohomology and k-theory, so I'm going to use the same variables I use. I use, you know, I denote the logarithms of the variables by the same variable. So I hope it's, uh, I hope it's okay. So this will be, so this is, so this is, uh, this means I, I take the product of the corresponding current weight, so it's going to be a product of j of a j plus x i. Now this one comes with the minus sign, and so they will go in denominator, so it will be 1 over, and they all come with the 1 over, so it's going to be the product over minus h bar minus a j minus x i. Now here there is a part which is, which is has h bar, it has no h bar, so with the, without h bar, it's going to be, since this is with the minus, 
it's going to be xi minus xj and then will be xj minus xi. Right? This whole thing means this is minus 1. So this whole thing will give you this minus 1 to the k. So this, uh, in my bit equation, there was minus 1 to the, sorry, k minus 1. This was minus 1 to the k minus 1, sticking in front. This comes from this part. And then the next part is the, um, so xi minus xj minus hr xj minus xi minus okay. that makes sense? This whole big thing has to be equal to that, and this is just a big direct equation. This is an exercise, you can write the same thing for the Hilbert scheme of points, and check that this, in fact, does give the argument. This, uh, this is not trivial. I mean, it requires either so, the fact that you get the eigenvalues of the operators as stated. So, what does it mean? It means this is my particular operator. The particular operator I wrote down was a quantum multiplication by the first chunk class. It means you take the variables satisfying this equation, you sum them up. Yeah, so, that's kind of untrivial. But it's true. All right, I'm uh, again out of time. Oh, sorry, a bit again over time, and uh, for which I uh, profoundly apologize. That, that's it for today. Yeah.